I hope I can line up my ski VR prompt with the May Chaos Rain prompt, but we'll see how things go. Everybody. my name is Danny, and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to my favorite video of the month, which I feel like I say at the beginning of every single Ski BR video, but it really is my favorite, and that is Ski BR. I will be picking my prompts for May, which is extra exciting because May Chaos Rain is happening, and so there are six reading prompts for that, but before we get into reading prompts, we have to go over what I read this past month in April. So first up, I had Civil War Poetry and Prose, which was a genre prompt where I had to read a nonfiction. I gave this a 6 out of 10. I think I said this in my last Ski BR video when I picked this book. I do really like poetry, and I do enjoy war poetry, but like, war stories aren't really my thing. And so the poetry aspect of this was great, but then the nonfiction prose letters that were part of this, I just wasn't really that interested in, and that's why it gets a 6 out of 10, because it was good, it was interesting, and I really enjoyed the poetry, but the rest of it was just pretty meh. Then we had Break the Bodies, Haunt the Bones, which was another genre pick, and I had to read a sci-fi or paranormal book, and this got a 9 out of 10. Holy cow, this is like the definition of an unexpected favorite. It was so, so good. Going into this, the only thing I knew about it were ghosts, but I feel like ghosts barely scratches the surface of, like, weirdness in this novel, and I say weirdness with, like, complete fondness, like, I love all the weird things. It's so good, and the characters are so compelling, there's so much strange stuff going on that I want to talk about, but also I don't want to spoil for other people going into this. So definitely check this out if you like sci-fi stuff, if you like paranormal, if you like weird fiction, this is so, so good. Then I picked up Knots, which is a short story collection, and this was for an aesthetic prompt where I do pick a book with a horizontal title on the spine, so I don't know if you can see, but the letters go this way. And I gave this a 6 out of 10. Short stories just aren't really my thing. Like, I've read some really, really good ones, but for the most part they just don't really hit for me because I feel like I need a little extra time to get to know the characters and really get into the story. But there were still some really good ones in here. For the most part though, they were kind of just not my thing. Like there was one, it was the second story in the entire collection, and it's about this mom who gives birth to her son and the umbil umbilical cord like can't be cut and so they live their lives connected to each other. It was really weird and kind of off-putting and kind of put me in a sour note for the rest of the collection but like I tried to work past it and there were some really good ones and um definitely gave me a lot to think about. And lastly I had Almost Home which was a genre prompt for a poetry or play and I gave this a 7 out of 10. Overall, I thought this was a really strong collection. There were a few here and there that felt kind of like filler poems, like there was a page count the poet had to reach and they just decided to write some stuff on the topic, kind of not really thinking about it, but like every poetry collection has that I feel. They were still good, they just didn't really have the uh, emotional oof that I look for in poetry. There were, however, several that I absolutely adored and I feel like really hit home for me and those were romanticizing the unromantic, what it feels like sometimes, and how should I define these blurred edges, sorry smudged edges, I don't know why I said blurred, whatever. Those three poems I absolutely loved so much. I really felt like they were looking into my own brain but um yeah this was a pretty good poetry collection. I definitely see myself returning to it to reread some of the poems in the future, and if you're a fan of poetry, maybe you want to check it out. As for non ski BR books, I read Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 15, which I gave a 9 out of 10. Don't really have a whole lot to say on this because it is still in the middle of the Shibuya Incident arc, and it's still very much in the same vein of how that's been going. Although the next volume, which I'm very excited for, actually wraps that arc up, which is great because it's been like 50 chapters, and so I'm excited to see what happens next. 
but I did really like the first chapter in this because it gave a little bit of a break from the Shibuya incident and there's also a little scene about halfway through this volume with Miwa and it absolutely broke my heart. It was so cute. I'm pretty sure I cried when I read it. But yes, this was very good, even though I hate the cover because I hate Mahito and this is also just a really disturbing cover. But I look forward to volume 16. Then I picked up Key of Arcandus, which is a very heavy book. It's pretty thick. This is by far the biggest book that I read this month. And I gave this a 7 out of 10. In all honesty, I had some hard times getting into it. It felt very abrupt, like it wasn't really easing me into the story at all. There was a whole lot of things thrown at me as the reader right away that never fully got explained in a way that I understood. But I mean, I'm fine with that because this was still really good and a very compelling story. So even though I don't fully understand the world and the magic and all that, I still had a good time reading it. It was just a bit of a rough start and there's also just so much world building that it was pretty overwhelming, but I feel like as the series goes on, because this is the first book in a series, I will ease into it a little bit more and actually feel more grounded in the world. This was just a lot thrown at me for the first book in a series. One of my biggest critiques is the romance. I didn't really believe it. I mean, it's like the, the couple that ends up together at the end, they're very cute and I like that, but this, it's just I don't know, something about it didn't feel fully developed, it felt a little bit rushed, and I don't know, I I just wasn't a fan of it, but um, hopefully now that they are an established couple in future installments of the book, it will feel more realistic and natural to me. And the last book that I finished this month was The Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. I gave this an 8 out of 10. I say the last book I finished and that is because I am currently reading The Night Country, which is the sequel to this. I'm reading it digitally so I can't hold it up, but um, I, I still have a few days left in the month so I think I'm gonna be able to finish it. But I gave this an 8 out of 10, which is I think a little bit higher than I gave it the first time I read it a couple of years ago because this was a reread. And I don't know, I just remember really hating the main characters, Alice and Finch, the first time I read it, but this time around I actually really liked Alice, and I'm still not the biggest fan of Finch, but like, I didn't hate him, I thought he was okay as a character. But um, yes, I'm not that far into the night country, I'm, I want to say like 80 pages, maybe 90 pages in, and it's 300 and something pages, maybe close to 400, so like, I'm, I'm not that far into it, but I am enjoying it and I'm excited to see how it turns out. Um, actually, my bullet journal theme for May in my regular bullet journal is Hazelwood themed because this is an Owl Crate edition. I didn't get it from Owl Crate, I bought this secondhand, but it came with a set of stickers and I'm like, you know what? I can theme a bullet journal spread around this or bullet journal monthly theme. And I'm really happy with how it's turning out, and it's making me love the story just a little bit more because it's feeling a little more personal to me. <laughs> Alright, as I said, May Chaos Reign, the event that myself and my fellow Chaos Queens are hosting during the month of May, is... I will link my announcement video down below for you guys to check out because I announced all of the reading prompts and in the description of that video is the other three announcement videos for you to get all of the other prompts but they're not really relevant to this right now because I'm just picking the books that I'm going to read but yes I just wanted to bring that up and now we can get into my rolls. Alright why don't we kick things off with the first roll and that is a 10 so that is a length prompt. Okay, so for our first roll, we got it in the 10 point spot, which means I have a length prompt. So I've got my D8 that I'm using today. It's my little pink and red speckled one. So I'm going to roll it. And I got a three. You can see it. I got a three. So I have to pick a book between 201 and 300 pages. So let me check my shelf real quick. Okay, so for this one, I'm going with a book that I honestly hadn't thought of it all when I was thinking of books that I wanted to read next month, but I am going with an ebook that I have access to through Scribd, and that is Piranesi. It is 241 pages. This book was like all over booktube the past several months, like everyone seems to love it. I don't know anything about it except it's like magical realism fantasy-ish, maybe? That's what I got out of the things I've heard about it anyway. Um, yeah. 
I don't know anything about this, so here's hoping that I like it. <laughs> Moving on, we have roll number two. And that's another 10, so that's an aesthetic prompt. Okay, and for our second roll, it's another 10, so now I have an aesthetic prompt. And so I got my green bin out, and I'll shake it up and see what the prompt is. Of course, they're all sticking together. Let's go with this one. A floral cover. I'm gonna look at some covers and see what I can find. Okay, so this is a bit of a strange pick because the flowers are very much not the focus of this cover, but I'm picking Reckless by Cornelia Funk, and if you can look past the goblin-looking creature, there are tons of flowers wrapped around the frame. This is a fantastic book. I love it so much. I've read it several times, but I think I'm due for a reread. I won't go on my rant about the naming conventions of this series and the cover changes and all that, which I totally could. I have so much to say about that, but the fourth book in the series apparently came out recently. I did not know about that until I saw it at the bookstore and instantly had to buy it, but it's been a couple of years, so I'm going to reread the first three books before I get to that one, starting with Reckless. So this is my pick for a floral cover. All right, here we are with roll number three, and that is yet another 10, giving us a genre prompt. Hopefully we don't get a fourth 10, because then I would have to pull out of the punishment jar, or maybe that'd be a good thing, because that would help cover the pick a book randomly prompt for May Chaos Reign. Okay, and for our third roll, we have another 10, so I've got my blue bin out to pick a genre prompt. So we're going to shake it up, and see what we get. As always, they're sticking together. I think I only have one here. Okay, so sci-fi or paranormal. Another prompt that we got last time, but that's fine. As long as it doesn't keep coming up, I don't mind pulling the same prompt two times in a row. Okay, so I don't have anything to hold up for this one either, but I will be picking Mars Red, which is a manga about vampires, and vampires are paranormal. And so this is actually going to cover two different prompts for, I almost said Nostalgia New Year, that is not correct, for May Chaos Reign. It's going to cover Marta's prompt, which is to read a foreign work because this is a manga and hence has been translated from Japanese. And it's also about vampires, which was Crystal's prompt, so that's pretty cool. And I heard Jem from Bookish Gems talk about this a little bit ago, and she really liked it. And it's only three volumes long, and so why not give it a shot? Am I neglecting all of the manga on my list of 22 manga that I wanted to read in 2022? Oh, for sure. But you know what? I'm gonna add this anyway. And now we have our final roll of the month. And of course I jinxed it and seem to have lost all of my good rolling from last month because that is the fourth 10, meaning I have to pull from the punishment jar. And we rolled another 10, which means I have to pick from the punishment jar. We were so, so lucky last month not to have to do that. But before we even get to that for this month, I have to roll another length prompt because that's what I got for this fourth roll. So I've got my D8 again. I'm gonna roll. And I got a six, which means I have to pick a book between 501 and 600 pages. So I'm gonna go look at some page counts. Okay. For this one, I'm going to go with another book that I have access to through script, so it's looking like an ebook heavy month, and that is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I honestly don't have, like, a super big interest in this book, but like Piranesi, it's a booktube favorite, and so I added it to my library, and this is literally the only book that I can find that's between 501 and 600 pages. I did look through all of my Neil Gaiman books because Neil Gaiman is my prompt for May Chaos Reign to read anything by Neil Gaiman, but they were all either like just shy of 500 pages or just over 600, and I'm so mad about that, but it's fine. Um, yeah, These Violent Delights is a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in Shanghai, and it took the booktube world by storm, and it was like an instant hit, and it is 545 pages, so right in the middle of my page length requirement. So I guess I'm reading it next month. And finally, we come to my punishment jar pick. I feel like I haven't used this in a while, but I don't, honestly don't remember. I just know I didn't use it last month. But um, hopefully this gives us a physical book, because otherwise my wrap-up of this video is going to be kind of sad looking 
with me only holding up one physical book, but um, let's see. Um, shake it up a bit. I don't think I've taken out things that I've already read that I hadn't pulled from here, so we're gonna hope I don't pull something that I've already read. We have... <laughs> okay, um, I don't know if you can read this, but it says free pick, so I get to pick literally anything. So, I'm gonna figure out what I want to read. <laughs> okay, so I actually picked three books that I don't know what I'm gonna choose between, but they are these. It is The Ocean at the End of the Lane, Stardust, and Coraline, all by Neil Gaiman. Like I just said, to read a Neil Gaiman work is my prompt for My Chaos Reign, and so that would obviously be covered by one of these. This would also cover Violet's prompt, which is to read a nostalgic YA or middle grade, although now that I'm thinking about it, Reckless would also cover that, because that is very nostalgic to me. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know which one I am most interested in right now. Um, Ocean at the End of the Lane is the one that I read most recently. I read it in January of 2021, and that was the first time I ever read it. So maybe this one wouldn't count for nostalgic, because it was not like a strong nostalgia, but it is one of my favorite books of last year that I read. These two definitely are way more nostalgic from my childhood. I think Stardust might be the most nostalgic. I don't know. I'm gonna pick one of these to cover my free pick from my punishment jar. That's so lucky, but also not lucky because now I have to have something else pick a book randomly for me. Unless I do it with these. Okay, yeah. You know what? Why don't we do that? Between these three books, I'm going to let you guys in the comments decide which one I'm going to read, and that is going to cover my have something randomly pick a book for you chaos reading prompt for May Chaos Reign. So, do you want me to read Coraline, Stardust, or The Ocean at the End of the Lane? Now that I've rambled on and on, I'm going to cut to the wrap-up of this ski BR and let y'all know what I'll be reading next month. Okay, so this is my wrap-up, even though I'm only reading two of these books. I don't know which one of these I'm reading, and that I will be reading Reckless. And then I have three ebooks that I'm going to be reading. The first is Pira Nessie, which was for a length prompt. The second is Mars Red, which is for a sci-fi paranormal. And the third is These Violent Delights, which is also a length prompt. Reckless is for a floral cover, and then one of these three Neil Gaiman works is a free pick from my punishment jar. I honestly forgot that I put that option in there, but I did and I'm very happy I did because honestly I'm not really feeling any of the books that are in my punishment jar, but that's fine. We'll get to them later. I have plenty of time to read them this year. But yes, let me know which Neil Gaiman book you want me to read this month, if you want me to read Coraline, Stardust, or The Ocean at the End of the Lane. Let me know what books you're reading, if you plan on participating in May Chaos Rain, what you're reading to cover all of the reading prompts. Yeah, I'm kind of just rambling again. Uh, that is going to be it for me today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for content, and that way I will see you in the next one. Bye guys!